Hey guys, this is Alana. You're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. It's Tuesday, April 7th. We're in Easter week already. Isn't that crazy? It is. And it doesn't feel, I mean, I know it doesn't have to feel like Easter week, but it doesn't no, really I know. feel it's like weird. Holy Week. <laughs> yeah. Did your church do much kind of for uh, Palm Sunday or was it pretty much a normal, not normal, but you know what I mean, a, a virtual church service? It was a normal virtual church service and they did for the kids lesson, they talked about it and kind of had an explanation of what Jesus did and mm-hmm, you know how mm-hmm. Jesus yeah, came into Jerusalem. And I remember as a kid growing up, they would always, it was like so cool because they would have real palm leaves that they would hand yeah. out. Mm-hmm. That was really fun. That was like my favorite part of Palm Sunday. Well, you know, Palm Sunday, I often consider one of my favorite holidays. I, I think, you know, like most Christians think of like, okay, there's Christmas and there's Easter. Those are our religious holidays. But I love Palm Sunday because you don't have the heaviness of Good Friday. You don't have like, it's, it's kid friendly. It's happy. It's joyous. And there's not a lot of like, I almost feel like even for Easter, you almost, like, you go into it somber. Yes, it's a joyful thing, but it's it's so significant. It can kind of be spiritually taxing, whereas Palm Sunday, like, it's just about the worship and the joy. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I can definitely feel that. And I, growing up, I loved Holy Week because we celebrated, um, so we had Palm Sunday and we got the palm mm-hmm. palm branches. And then we had on Maundy Thursday, on the Thursday of the Last Supper, mm-hmm. our little church would do this reenactment of the Last Supper. Oh, that's neat. And did they bring in like the Passover elements too? Or was it more just like the bread and the wine? It was just that we just did normal communion and mm-hmm. I well, so and I'll I'll talk about the Passover Seder after that, but they just had normal communion, but they had, it was just so neat because all these people that we would see every day at church, it wasn't a huge church. And mm-hmm. so you'd see like the pastor played, um, who was, was it Thomas the or was it Andrew? Who was the one that was considered short in stature? Do you remember? I don't know. There I was, know John maybe was considered the youngest. I think there was one where they, I think maybe it's Andrew, but it was one of the, one of the disciples was considered Mm -hmm. short in stature and Mm -hmm. our pastor was pretty short and he always played that disciple. And it was kind of like, it would always get a joke because he would, each disciple went out and described who they were. Oh, funny. Everyone would kind of laugh like, ha ha, you know, but it was, but it was so neat to see the pastor like acting, you know, these weren't actors, Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, right. And at one point in the drama, they would all pose just like the painting of the last supper. I've seen one like that too. Yeah. That's kind of fun. And then the lights would go down and Mm -hmm. it was so neat as a kid, it brought to life that story, but later on in life. So when I was in my 20s, my husband and I worked with a youth group and we attended our first Passover Seder. I had never done that where Mm -hmm. we actually, they take the Jewish Passover Seder and connect it to the Christian meanings. And it was profound. It's really powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've only done it. I think I've done it twice and it is, it's really neat because there's so many other elements of the Passover meal that, that we don't have in communion. So I remember like you dip, you dip an herb in salt to remind Mm -hmm. you of the salty tears and, and the bitterness, like horseradish, Mm -hmm. you know, the bitter. Yeah. Yeah. So this is funny. I went to a college that was um, primarily Jewish students and it was the festival of booths that they'd celebrate in the fall. And it was a week where like, it's one of the three main feasts prescribed in the old Testament, but I hadn't really heard of it. (laughs) <laughs> you know, or like wasn't aware that it was still um, observed at all, but they eat outside for a week. And the idea is like to commemorate their 40 years in the wilderness. And so it's like, hey, our ancestors slept in tents. We're going to eat in tents is basically how it went. But I think about that some for what we're going through now, how like I would love to do an annual, even if it's just for our family, like a week of remembrance 
you know, let's not go anywhere. Let's, you know, remember what God brought us through. Um, it's, and it reminds me of that festival of boots for sure. Oh yeah. Now, did they eat every meal outside in the same tent or like, how does that work? So the way it worked at my college is they just moved the cafeteria like outside with an awning. Oh, so um, it was actually the college did it. It mm -hmm, wasn't just like a group mm -hmm. of students, but it was, oh, that's Yeah, so yeah. We actually had one of the cafeterias was the kosher cafeteria. And I forget exactly how it was set up, but basically you'd go inside to get your food and then you'd take it out. I mean, it, similar to an outdoor patio, but you know, it was kind of a, a strict observance. That's really neat. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really, I think that's neat. Well, I, I was even thinking this week that being that we have so much time at home and a lot of the grocery stores have set out Passover stuff in a little, oh really? Mm -hmm. like area, you know, I've seen mm -hmm. a lot of the Passover mm -hmm. stuff. So I was thinking that when I make my store run, maybe mm -hmm. you know, it would be neat to get some of the Passover things and have our own Passover Seder and just, I just going through that Passover Seder, it was definitely geared for Christians. So it, it brought in the elements of Christianity right, and the right. fulfillment of the prophecies. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, this is amazing. How, like, did they really celebrate it like this? Because to celebrate it, yeah. going through all these elements, so pointed to Jesus. And I, it was powerful mm -hmm. for me. I feel like it would be powerful for my kids too. Well, remind me, I, it's not something that I can offer to everyone listening just for copyright issues, but I saved, we had like an actual script that we went through um, one year and it's, it's got like, you know how in the Passover, maybe um, people listening might not like, there's actual questions and answers. It's like a call and response. It's a scripted right. thing. And I've got the script that I saved from one of these for like a, a Christian Seder. If you want, I can make oh, you yeah. a copy. Yeah, I would love I'm that. sorry. I can't do that for everybody. Cause like I said, I'm sure it's, you know, kind of copyrighted. I can't just scan it and throw it up online. But, but you can search online. Cause I, I know that that's you can true. I'm sure there are other things like that. Find mm -hmm. them. Cause that would be a neat thing to go through as a family. I think yeah, commemorate definitely. the week. Do you have any thoughts for like Easter? Have you got, are you even thinking that far ahead? <laughs> like all of five days ahead? <laughs> well, I hadn't. Um, so a few weeks ago, when I, the last time I went to Costco, I saw the Easter dresses hanging up and Aww. it just kind of made me sad. I, yeah. it's, you know, okay. So it's like when I lived in a community where there were sidewalks and then moved to a community where there were no sidewalks. And all of a sudden I thought, I can't go jogging on the sidewalk anymore. I never jogged on the sidewalk. Not that you did. When I no, I get it. There. Okay. I get so it. Parallel this to the fact that I've never been big on dressing up my daughter. I'm the opposite mm -hmm. of my mom. She was like into bows and frills and dresses yeah. and I never really was. And so maybe that's yeah. why. But I do. In Alaska is really casual. It is. And it's also hard because Easter, sometimes it's cold. <laughs> it's cold and you can't always wear your pretty Easter shoes. Like I sometimes mm -hmm. have to carry her into yep. the building yeah. for her to be able to wear those shoes because of the snow mm -hmm. and slush. Because this, this is not yeah. just snowy time of year. It's slushy, yucky time of year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I have tried to make an effort on Easter to get, you know, either get her a dress or at least have a dress available that's nice and some tights and stuff, which that's another thing in Alaska. It's really hard if you wait until the week before Easter to get tights for your daughter. Oh, how funny. You can't, you can't find them. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Only having boys, I've never had to do that. Like Good Friday, you know, oh no, I don't have tights. <laughs> right. So anyway, but yeah, so I, I have thought that uh, she does have a dress that she could use. And I've been thinking about getting her a new dress, maybe even like going on an actual grocery store run so that I can get her a little, you know, just like a, a little dress to wear. Cause she does, look, she likes dressing up. Yeah. Um, maybe it skips a generation. <laughs> maybe, maybe it does, but I definitely want to dress the kid, get the kids to dress up and take a family mm -hmm. picture. I don't know if my mm -hmm. husband's going to be on board, but I, I right. have at least a kid picture. Yeah. For Easter just, just to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's something worth remembering for sure. You know, yeah, this I don't is, know. I, I 
don't know this like for a fact. I couldn't swear it in a court of law, but I have no like I'm positive that this is the first Easter that we're not going to be in church. You know, like in my entire yeah, life. Me too. Um, well, actually. I was born in April. I'd have to see where Easter fell that year. Maybe I didn't, you know, make my first Easter, <laughs> but you know, like it's, it's very new and very different. So I think that doing something to commemorate, you know, we don't, we don't even have dress clothes for the kids anymore because they grow so fast. And it's like for once a year, <laughs> honestly, which is all you need for Alaska. We don't do yeah. it. Um, but you know, I've got an Easter dress. This is funny though. I don't have any dress shoes anymore. Just because why <laughs> so I've got a dress that I could wear if I were going to church, but I'd have to wear like tennis shoes or snow boots with it. Those are my only options. <laughs> yeah. I have dress boots. I have boots that really? are, like, yeah, they're just oh, like little black boots, just kind black of like, boots. Yeah. yeah. That's they're not dress, a bad idea. Dress but you can wear black boots with an Easter dress, right? Oh, no, you can't go backwards. My mom would, yeah, my mom would, would have something to say about that. She was big on, on the like white shoes after what, what is the thing? Well, and I mean, were you guys considered the South where you grew up? We are South of the Mason Dixon. So we are considered the South. <laughs> okay. But not like deep South. I mean, is we're it different or is it still kind of Bible belt, wear your hat kind of thing? It's funny because we are, so we were so close to DC that it was mm -hmm. urban, you know, so it was more, it was less okay. deep Just South feeling. City life. Yeah. Yeah. But my okay. mom's family was pretty traditional. And so like my grandmother cooked traditional Southern food, like fat back and everything and mm. fried chicken. Like she was yeah, such a good yeah. cook. Um, uh -huh. So I would consider us as a family being kind of more Southern okay. than maybe like a DC metropolitan mm -hmm. family. Okay. Got we it. Were suburban. Yeah. Right. So she no, was traditional in that sense. We did not always wear hats when I was younger. Oh, I really? always uh -huh. had an Easter hat, but not, mm -hmm. not as I got older. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It'll be interesting to just hear kind of what you were talking about with like prom seasons coming up. What are people going to do? I'm curious for the same thing about Easter. You know, are there going to be, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious to see if churches come up with interesting um, scenarios or, you know, how people are doing those teddy bear hunts in their windows, you know, maybe doing like, yeah. Like, big picture of an Easter egg in your window so kids can do Easter egg hunts in their neighborhood or something. That's, I don't know. That's a fun idea, like a virtual mm -hmm. Easter egg hunt, mm -hmm. like a drive something. around. Yeah. Yeah. Like our kids have not been in the car in weeks. I've gone once to um, drop a battery thing off for my husband when his truck broke and I've driven like twice to the mailbox because I didn't want to walk on the ice. But our kids haven't been in the car. <laughs> you know, we're saving so much money on gas, which is nice. <laughs> I know. Same I was listening. Yeah. I was listening to a finance podcast yesterday and I guess um, there are car insurance places where they only charge you like per mile that you drive. So like, wow, now would be the time to look into something like that. that. Definitely would. <laughs> yep. Anything new from your weekend or everybody still kind of hanging in there? Yeah, we're hanging in there. I woke up with a headache the last three days in a row. Oh. And so like the two days that I woke up with a headache, I, the second day when I woke up again with a headache mm -hmm. um, and like the night before my daughter had been complaining of a sore throat and mm -hmm. like feeling, you get like, a little sick. nervous. You start yeah. to get nervous, but we're all I fine. It's, I it's had that last night. I got a, season. yeah, I, I was sick and maybe allergies. I got a sore throat before bed last night and was mm -hmm. getting kind of worried and took my temperature and it was fine. And then my son woke up and just like, wasn't feeling great this morning. And I think we're fine, but it is, it's very scary when you, um, you know, when those things happen. It is. Well, uh, so I was just thinking for this week, just for Holy Week in general, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, could we, I don't know, is there something that we could you know what I love doing this week is I love going through in John, just the entire Last Supper discourse. I actually put up another couple episodes of the Mindful Christian Prayer podcast. Um, one of them is based off that. I might even do a few more. Oh, this is funny. I've been taking my phone and microphone out and recording them in the car. <laughs> Like in the driveway, I'm just sitting in the car in the driveway. So now I think I have a deeper appreciation for you going out into your garage 
for some quiet time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other thing is our bandwidth has been so tied up. My husband has had to use the computer and things like that, that sometimes my cellular data is better for oh, really? doing, mm-hmm. which, I mean, you know me, my cellular data is hit or miss. Right, right. And there are times when I, on my phone, streaming, <clears throat> like doing FaceTime, because my, well, anyway, not to get too into it, but sometimes we use FaceTime for mm-hmm. um, different lessons for the kids. So at one point, oh, uh-huh. one son was on the computer, my husband was on the computer, and then my other son had to do a uh, FaceTime, and I turned uh-huh. off the uh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi because <laughs> it actually worked better for him to be off of the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it's, so. it's kind of crazy. Thankfully we've got unlimited and so we can do, you know, we can have more than one thing going on, which is nice. But, um, yeah. well, so I don't know. That's one option we could, you I know, think that's a great idea. The mindful Christian prayers, like point people is that what you're talking about? Or, you know, even just reading some from like the last supper and John, you know, maybe doing like a mini Bible study. Yeah, we could do that. You mean like on the air? Like yeah, on our Mm -hmm. things? Yeah, Mm -hmm. we could do that. Um, I guess we're not prepared for it today. Not today. And I know, yeah, you've got to run for someone else needs the the webcam. Someone else needs the webcam. (laughs) But you know, maybe by tomorrow we could just come. I don't think it needs to be formal, but maybe even start with um, you know, back before we were just doing these COVID conversations, we'd have a verse of the day. Maybe we could just take some passages from there, talk about them a little bit, because yeah, I think it is still important, yeah, to remember that this is, you know, this is Holy Week. This is a time to remember all that Jesus did. And, you know, it's such an encouraging passage anyway. It is. Absolutely. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll look that up and Cool. Maybe we can have that as our verse of the day. Yeah, um, I think that's a great idea and a nice okay. way to, yeah, to just keep that in the forefront of our minds. So mm-hmm. since we're not ready today, here is a just for fun question to get people in the Easter mood. What's your favorite Easter song or hymn? Um, okay, I have two, I think. So, um, okay. I want to say it. I'm trying to think. I was think. if you were getting ready to start singing it or something. No, 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 no. I'm trying to think of the words. I think it's Oh Sacred Head. Oh Sacred um, Head, No Moon. That, yeah, that's That good was one. my favorite Good Friday song. Mm. And then, um, oh gosh, what is the, the um, there was another one that's actually an Easter song. What is the one where it's, um, and it's not exactly an Easter song, but it talks about like, um, like about how like Satan trembles. How great is our God? No, but it, okay. It's the one about, um, okay, never mind. <laughs> the Martin Luther one. There are a lot, pro- maybe. Yeah. Okay, so that's, I'm going to have to um, look it up because there's some, okay. yeah. Uh, uh, Easter. <laughs> <laughs> So there's um, a Martin Luther one that talks about, you know, like our foe has no. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's our the foe. one. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the one. I know exactly what you're talking about. I can't think of the name. Okay. <laughs> People are yelling it at us. Right. So <laughs> um, write it write it in the comments if you know what we're talking about. But yeah, yeah it's the one yeah. about our foe, but Satan, mm-hmm, our foe, mm-hmm. is conquered and defeated. A mighty fortress. Thank you. A mighty fortress. Thank <laughs> we you. Got it. <laughs> That's it. A mighty fortress is is one of my favorite Easter ones. How about you? Okay. Um, Good Friday. I really like. Um, there is a fountain filled with blood, and for Easter, um, I think my favorite is Christ the Lord is risen today. Oh, I do love that one too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice. Now I'm gonna have so, those floating through my head all day. I know. Well, you know how much I like Sayla. They do a really good version of the one that you named. Um, what do you name for Good Friday? A my oh oh Sacred Head now wounded. Yeah, they do a really good version of that, and then they do an amazing. There's a live acapella recording of "Were You There When They Crucified My Lord?" That's really powerful. I love that one those too. I love all those yeah. good hymns. Yeah, yeah. So um, I thought I had one more thing to say, but maybe not. 
<laughs> Should well, we, we end in a, in a group sing-along? <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Well, I could do real quick. I could do our devotional for today. If you've got time for it, yeah. I do. do I've got a couple minutes. So, okay. um, so day six on the Praying Christian Women's Guide to Praying Through the Coronavirus Crisis is for teachers, students, and parents. And you can get this at prayingchristianwomen.com slash be the light. Um, it's a 14-day guide. And day six is teachers, students, and parents. So um, Philippians 4, 19 to 20 says, My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. And as we know, this is just an unprecedented time for teachers. I just had a, just cut me straight to my heart, a friend of mine who is not only a parent of a child with special needs, but a teacher for special education mm -hmm. is trying to navigate helping her 13 year old child do his work at home in a new way yeah. and teaching her kids who have special needs digitally unprecedented. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she's feeling this tremendous weight of this. And yeah. I know there are parents, teachers, students that are just feeling weighed down. And so let's mm -hmm. just pray for them today. For sure. God, we praise you for being Jehovah Jireh, the almighty God who provides. You supply every single one of our needs according to the resources of the universe, all of which are at your command. We confess that when we enter into uncharted territory, we can feel afraid, paralyzed, or even hopeless. Help us to believe in you and to trust that you can do miracles and work in ways we never dreamed or imagined. We thank you for hearing our prayers for the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of our teachers, students, and parents. We lift teachers up to you today, Lord. We ask that you would remove the spirit of confusion or feeling overwhelmed and replace it with a spirit of peace and confidence. Impart wisdom to these teachers, giving them ideas and resources to bring the classroom to their students during the time they're not in school. We pray that you would help them organize their schedules around families who also might be home and to allow them to work with focus, clarity, creativity, and efficiency. We pray for students, particularly those who don't have ideal home lives. We pray that you would help them feel loved and seen. We ask you to draw attention to the marginalized children who aren't getting support or help at home, and especially those who aren't safe or aren't getting food. Allow neighbors, teachers, or the school district to become aware of their needs and meet them in every way possible. Place Christians in their lives who would be prompted to check in and help them through this difficult time. We pray for all students who are feeling distanced and isolated from friends. Provide them with safe, positive ways to engage that will build them up. Give youth leaders creative ways to reach out that even kids who weren't part of youth groups before would be drawn into fellowship with believing peers. For those who are missing out on huge milestones like proms and graduations, we ask that you would bless them with friends and family members who will band together to help them celebrate. Use this time in the lives of children to deepen their understanding of the world to be reminded of who you are and that you are a refuge in times of trouble, the one who provides when we need it. We pray for an awakening in our children and teenagers during this time of trial, that they would be snapped out of the false sense of security they may have felt and have their eyes open to the fact that in this world there is trouble, but more importantly, that you have overcome the world through your son, Jesus. We pray that a generation of students would rise up through this crisis and be launched forward into a deeper, more fruitful faith that will change the world. We lift up all parents to you today, Lord, particularly those who are caring for sick children. Give them peace and a calm spirit that they would know you're near to them and care deeply for their children. We pray for parents still wondering what to do about child care when their children are out of school and they need work. Provide for them in every way and let them know that somehow you were the source of that provision. We lift up parents who are trying to help their children navigate this crisis while shouldering heavy financial, physical, or emotional burdens of their own. Give them strength to get out of bed in the morning and energy to accomplish every task set before them. Even more, infuse them with the joy that they cannot explain apart from you. We ask that you would pour out an extra measure of blessing on parents with children with special needs who aren't able to have therapy in school regularly. Equip them with everything they need to care for and shepherd the ch these children with energy, patience, and love. Be glorified in this difficult time. Let it be a time when all parents can connect with their children and allow families to flourish in ways we couldn't have imagined. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. And right. we will talk soon and it'll be fun to go through some of John together. Yes, let's do that tomorrow. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.